CompTIA's simulated lab activities are a key element to your training. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you the components of the lab simulator so that you can successfully complete the activities in this course. Some labs start out with an overview of the office. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But first, let's click on Hardware in Office 2. The lab has four main areas. On the left is the Scenario window. The items in this bullet list provide you with all the tasks that you'll be evaluated on. If you need more space while you're working, you can hide the Scenario window by clicking this button, and you can click it a second time to bring it back. The main area where you'll do most of your work is called the Workspace. It includes the items you'll work with and configure. For example, in this situation, we have a computer and we have wall plates with connectors for the cable internet, the network, and for AC power, for example. We also have the shelf. This holds pieces of equipment organized by category. Click the arrow or title to expand that category. These are the objects you'll use to complete configuration tasks within the workspace. You can think of the shelf as your inventory of spare parts. Now let's go through the process of completing a lab. The first thing you need to do is read the scenario. Read it carefully because you will be evaluated on whether you did everything correctly. You'll often need to examine objects within the workspace more thoroughly. You can use this slider to zoom in and out or use the wheel on your mouse. Before we go further, I need to point out that each object within the workspace occupies a certain amount of space, which is denoted by the outline that's around each object. For example, this is the area for the computer and this is the area for the wall plates. Within most of these windows, there are buttons that allow you to change the viewing perspective for that object. I'm currently looking at the front of the computer, but let's suppose I need to do some work on the back. I can come up and click on the back button. If I need to see the front of the computer again, say to power it on, I click the front button. Once you've familiarized yourself with the items in the workspace, you need to go to the shelf and use the categories displayed to find the objects that are required to complete the task. If you're looking at an item on the shelf, you can click on that object's details. For example, I can click the details link for the power cable. When I do, an overview of the cable is displayed. Notice that for this object, we see the cable itself. We can see each connector and I can look at the front, the back, and the top. Also notice that when I click an item on the shelf, it's displayed within the selected component area. We also can check the details here as well. You may also see an additional tab called Specifications, which opens a window that provides even more detail. Right now, we don't have an object on the shelf or workspace that has a Specification tab, but some do, for example, like a motherboard. The information there is similar to what you find in a user manual for that particular item. Before we can work with an object in the workspace, we must first add it. For example, to add this monitor to the workspace, we expand monitors and then drag it over. Notice that when I do, you see yellow lines appear which tell me where I can drop the monitor in relation to the other objects that are already there. In this case, I want to add the monitor to the workspace right next to the PC. I'll select this area and let go of my mouse key and the item drops right into place. If you decide you want to move that later, you can certainly do so. For example, I can grab the monitor and move it to the other side of the computer or I can move it back. Once the object is in the workspace, I can operate it to accomplish tasks in the scenario. In this example, I need to look at the back of the monitor and I need to use cables to connect this monitor to the computer system and the power outlet. 
let's look at the back of the computer as well as the monitor to see all the connectors. I now need to use the appropriate cables, connect these two devices together, and connect the monitor to the power outlet. Let's go over here to the shelf, expand the cables, and let's connect the monitor to the computer system using a video cable. I can click on the video cable so that it appears down in the selected component area. And let's grab each connector and add it to the appropriate port on the back of the computer and monitor. Notice we have various ports available, and as I hover over each one, it's outlined in blue. The blue rectangle tells me that this is a potential place where I could connect the item. However, it doesn't mean it's the right connector. It just means that it's an option I could try. In this case, I'm dealing with an HDMI connector, so I need to make sure that I drag and drop it to an HDMI port. When I release the mouse, one end of the connector is connected to the monitor, and I hear a click sound. If we look at the connector's status in the selected component area, one end is connected to the monitor now. The other is still unconnected. And notice that when I did that, the partial connections window was displayed. You'll always see this window when one end of a cable is connected, but the other end isn't. Now we need to connect the other end of the cable to the PC. I'm going to click and drag. Just like with the other end of the cable, I need to pick the right port to connect to. Once again, the status is updated in the selected component area. One end is connected to the computer and the other now to the monitor. Now you may be asking, what happens if I drop this in an incompatible connector? When you try and do that, you immediately receive an error sound. An error message is displayed in the selected component area and the cable doesn't get connected. Let's go ahead and put this back now in the correct port. That's one way you can connect devices using an item from the shelf. There's another way to make connections as well. Let me demonstrate this as I connect the power cable. This time I'm going to drag the cable directly from the shelf and then drop it on the appropriate connector. Because the cable has two different connectors, we have a female connector and a male connector, the simulator doesn't know which end I want to connect. The system shows the possibilities and I must tell it specifically which one I want to use. Let's go ahead and use the AC power female connector. And now that end is connected to the monitor. Let's plug the other end into the AC wall plate. Now I will connect the keyboard and mouse. Let's plug those in. First, I'll select the keyboard, find the USB on the back of the PC, and plug it in. And I'll also do the same with the mouse. Before we can use the computer or monitor, we obviously need to turn them on. Let's start with the computer. If you hover over the power button, you'll notice that it highlights. I can simply click on it to turn it on. Now I can go over to the monitor and power it on as well. For my demonstration today, I'm going to click on the Windows screen, even though that's not required here. As you can see, we have a simulated Windows environment. All of the things that you'd expect to see in the Start menu are displayed. I could search for Control Panel or go into the Settings, for example. The steps that you need to take within the simulation Windows environment are the same ones you'd need to do on a real Windows system. It's important to point out that as you go through the lab exercises, you'll see that not everything in the Windows interface is accessible. If a feature isn't necessary for a lab, it's not going to be permitted but all of the components you need to complete the scenario will be enabled. 
Now we can also switch back to the workspace view by clicking at the top for the hardware in Office 2. Let's go back to the Office Overview. Notice that since I added the monitor in Office 2, we now see both a hardware label and a Windows label. If I needed to move from one location to another, I can easily do so by going to the Floor Overview anytime and clicking a label. Once you've completed all the tasks in the scenario, you're ready to submit the lab for evaluation. In the upper right, you may see a Check Answer button. You can click this to verify you have completed all of the tasks. If by chance you missed something, you can simply click Keep Working to finish the exercise. Click Check Answer once more, confirm that everything is completed, and click Score Lab. Now, if you only see a Score Lab button, I recommend reviewing the outline task to confirm that you haven't missed anything. Afterward, click Score Lab. Once the exercise is scored, you will immediately see the results. If a task had more than one part to complete, they will be listed separately. To receive a check mark for the main task, each subtask must be completed correctly. To see what those subtasks were, click on Show Details. Within the explanation are detailed step-by-step -step instructions. So no problem if you couldn't remember how to perform a specific task. These detailed steps will provide additional assistance. You are welcome to repeat lab activities as many times as you like by launching the lab again. You can also view your last score report anytime. That's it for this demonstration. I hope you enjoy using the simulated labs.